Hello, everyone. Uh, today, uh, we have Dr. Sardar Bolun uh, at Northwestern University joining us today for our interview at this, uh, during this researcher spotlight. Um, so, Dr. Bolun, uh, could you please introduce yourself to our audience? Um, yes, of course. First of all, thank you so much for providing this opportunity for this uh, interview. And uh, I'm Sardar Bulun. Um, I'm, an, I'm a medical doctor. Currently, I serve as the uh, chair of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at uh, Prentice Women's Hospital uh, at Northwestern uh, University Feinberg School of Medicine in Chicago. Great. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, and um, I just wanted to ask you, um, I, you know, we know that you are working on endometriosis, you're doing a lot, but what inspired you to work on endometriosis? Um, honestly, originally I was, uh, my original research started uh, by looking at various roles of estrogen in human health and disease. And I quickly found out that endometriosis is uh, the ultimate disease, which is uh, uh, almost like fueled by uh, estrogen. Uh, estrogen uh, a, a stimulates the inflammatory process in endometriosis. As you know, there are a lot of like chronic inflammatory diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Endometriosis is one of those. But what makes endometriosis unique uh, is that estrogen stimulates the entire inflammation in endometriosis. So no estrogen, no inflammation. That's, that's kind of like how we designed the treatment. Great, yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. And um, so I know that Dr. Bulun, um, uh, the Endometriosis Foundation um, has supported you with a grant in 2019. Um, I would really like to, and I know our audience would really like to hear a bit about that grant um, and the work that you're doing related to that. The patients with endometriosis, these intrauterine uh, endometrial cells are uh, defective. Mm -hmm. They are either uh, uh, they are either uh, like mutated the epithelial component, or the stromal component has DNA programming problems. They don't have mutations, but their DNA, the, their code is uh, read uh, in a defective manner, which is called epigenetics. Mm -hmm. So uh, then we did concentrate on the stromal cells, which are epigenetically defective in both in endometrium and later in endometriosis. Mm -hmm. um, and we asked ourselves the question, uh, how can we change these uh, defectively programmed endometrial stromal cells? Mm -hmm. So one way is to program them appropriately, right? Mm -hmm. And to program cells appropriately and replace these bad cells, if you will, with the new good and uh, appropriately programmed cells. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so this is where we started. And it turns out that there is a new technology called uh, induced pluripotent stem cells or iPS cells. Basically, we can, for example, I can take your uh, blood cells and uh, so transform these blood cells in under culture conditions and make stem cells out of them. Mm -hmm. 
brand new stem cells, right. which would carry your DNA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I would like treat these cells, uh, these new stem cells, with a number of hormonal conditions uh, to uh, program their DNA appropriately and turn them into endometrial stromal cells. Because these cells have your DNA, then the endometrial stromal cells that we uh, generated in the lab uh, would uh, would be ready for uh, for the patient's um, endometrial cells to be transferred. This is like what we what we originally uh, accomplished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I uh, requested uh, funds from um, uh, Endofund, and thank you very much that uh, you, uh, you provided these funds mm -hmm. to take this. Uh, project further. So with the end of fund uh, uh, money, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to ask the following questions. If we take, uh, for example, blood cells from patients with endometriosis, mm -hmm. and if we take blood cells from endometriosis-free patients and uh, create stem cells, and then uh, differentiate these stem cells to endometrial stromal cells. Are they going to be different? And um, if they are not different, then that's great. Then we can like take the patient cells, appropriately program them, and then place them in their uh, uterine cavity Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then initiate the process with which these cells would be incorporated into their uh, endometrium. Therefore, we would uh, decrease or deplete the defective cells. But if this is not working, uh, then apparently we cannot use this. We have to use other methodologies. So it's, it's like a starting point, A, to understand how to make how to use the IPS cells of endometriosis patients or endometriosis free patients mm -hmm. into endometrial stromal cells and understand their differences. That's is the initial step that we have to accomplish to take this type of treatments further. Um, so I think, so is there anything else that you'd like to mention about the project itself that is, would be useful for us to hear related uh, to more the scientific aspect? I think, um, I think this is, this is the essence. I think, uh, you know, up to now, the major uh, goal to treat endometriosis is to s stop either the ovulation, mm -hmm. so when we stop ovulation, then menstruation automatically stops because ovulation stimulates endometrial development and shedding, right? Right. Um, so we use like uh, GnRH uh, analogs and birth control pills and, you know, some of the other uh, means to like suppress the brain hormones from right. stimulating the ovaries. Or we stop estrogen production, or uh, like uh, abnormal progesterone action at the level of these uh, inflammatory tissues. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, right un until now, there are no other treatments available to treat endometriosis, and the current treatments probably uh, are. Uh, satisfying to only 50 to 60 percent of all patients. I mean most of our patients are looking for new treatments because either pain or infertility are not uh, uh, met or are not uh, fixed with the treatments that we currently use. So we take a different approach and we ask the question 
can we take a patient's uh, blood cells, make stem cells out of them, mm -hmm. and then uh, program them appropriately and put them back into their uh, uterine cavity and uh, and then provide a uh, uh, mechanism whereby these new cells would replace the old defective cells. So this is the approach. I know you have to have a vision to like uh, reach a uh, important uh, aim. Mm -hmm. And we are just in the beginning and we are very uh, grateful to Endofund uh, to fund the fund this initial step whereby we we would understand uh, some of these uh, intricate mechanisms yeah and we're, we're grateful to you and your team for for doing this research because it seems um it's obviously a big deal um uh, just because of the impact that you just discussed, you know, it, it could lead to a new treatment uh, for endometriosis patients, which, like you said, many of them are looking for. Um, so, so thank you for that, too. Um, so right now, uh, where are you uh, currently in the project? Right now, we are, uh, we identified some patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are uh, getting like their uh, peripheral blood cells. Mm -hmm. so peripheral, peripheral blood cells do include bone marrow cells, circulating bone marrow cells mm -hmm. that we can use to make iPS cells. So we are in that, uh, uh, in that stage. Right. To um, ask you, um, you know, what, what excites you as a researcher um, about this research that you are doing on endometriosis? Um, it really excites me that, uh, I mean, I, I also see quite a few patients. I have a uh, large endometriosis practice, and it really breaks my heart that uh, a good number of patients do not have any other means for treatment. I mean, they're desperate. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to bring a new treatment option for these patients is the like major motivator mm -hmm. for me. I, as you know, endometriosis is not only about pain, but it just like destroys lives. Like it destroys the um, entire life of a woman yeah. starting very early on including her social life her economic life and family life everything else is, is horrendous it's horrible mm -hmm. so if we can like uh, bring new options uh, especially for these patients who are not responding to current treatments i mean that's huge that's the major major motivator also, it's a very uh, like complex disease. Uh, the famous uh, American uh, doctor, uh, Sir William Osler, once said that he, he, he was a uh, internal internist, internal medicine person. But he once said that if a physician can understand endometriosis, then you know this physician can understand anything. I mean, that's a major accomplishment. And um, I think that's very true. It's an enigmatic disease. Uh, so to be able to, you know, uh, uh, solve some of the uh, uh, pieces of the puzzle associated with endometriosis is also challenging, but it's also rewarding. Yeah, no, definitely. And like you say, it's, it is very challenging and it is such a com complex disease. So uh, for you, um, what are the major challenges that you have faced when it comes to research on endo? I think the major issue is the lack of a good model system still. Mm -hmm. Like uh, what really helped me was I, I work with uh, gifted surgeons like Dr. Sechkin and other surgeons 
across the nation or uh, across the globe to get human tissues. Still our major, uh, the best uh, model system that works so far are not animal models, but like really the human cells. Right. And uh, because it's such a complex disease and it occurs only in women and in some like uh, high order primates and like none of the animals, uh, other animals uh, acquire this disease uh, naturally. That, to me, I, I think that is the most challenging part uh, and to be able to find human tissues to do the appropriate uh, studies. So it's, it's difficult to have the appropriate model, but also, I mean, you're saying that um, human tissue is the best to use. And what I understand is it's also difficult for researchers to get those tissues. Is that correct? Definitely. I mean, like human tissues is like, as the saying goes, where the money is. So, I mean, that's where we should be uh, looking at. Right, right. It's a human disease. Yeah. So. Okay, I think the um, other question I'd really like to ask you is what future research, uh, especially in the field that you're working in, you feel um, should be conducted on endo? Um, I think, uh, uh, I think recently uh, a lot of new uh, developments occurred. Uh, the, uh, these new epithelial cell, not stromal, but epithelial cell mutations that were discovered by uh, different teams, including Dr. Sechkin's team, have opened a brand new avenue I mean, they serve at many levels. They, they were able to allow us to map uh, endometriotic lesions all the way from like the, within the uterus to uh, pelvic tissues, as well as to ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, this opened a brand new avenue. I think we should uh, study these. We should study the consequences of these uh, mutations, the biologic consequences on human tissues, and understand how these like stromal cells and these mutated epithelial cells interact between each other. Mm -hmm. And also, I think uh, we should use the new technologies such as these iPS cells and some of the other new technologies that are um, developing uh, in the disease uh, endometriosis, such as CRISPR-Cas9 technology, which has many, many different applications. And also we should like continue to uh, uh, establish a model that would be more uh, available to many investigators right. so that the disease could be appropriately studied. Honestly, I mean, that has been the one of the most uh, sort of like uh, limiting aspects of endometriosis. That's why many investigators did not get into it because there were not, not a lot of good models. Yeah. yeah. My final question is, do, do you have any final thoughts or comments you'd like to share with us? Um, first, uh, I would like to thank uh, Endofound and, uh, and yourself uh, uh, profusely, thanks so much for providing me this opportunity. I think uh, you asked a lot of uh, important questions and uh, gave me an opportunity to express myself and uh, uh, feature some of the work that we and others are doing. Um, I would like to thank you and your foundation a lot for giving us all of these, uh, you know, wonderful opportunities. Thank and you. Th and thank you very, very much for all the work you're doing. So this is what's, what's going to help patients in the future. So thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.